Good afternoon and a very warm welcome to a gorgeous afternoon here in downtown Dubai. Guys, tonight I'm flying back to London with British Airways, doing things a little bit differently. It's going to be in their business class aboard the Airbus A380. So come along and see what it's like on board. Leaving the stunning metropolis of Dubai behind, we were heading for Terminal 1 on that evening. This was the very original terminal at Dubai International Airport. This is where all other airlines go from, apart from Emirates and Flight Dubai. If you are departing out, particularly in the evening from this particular terminal, do make sure that you arrive well on time for your flight. It can be incredibly busy and a little bit chaotic in the initial check-in areas. On that particular night, British Airways had everything lined up very nicely with priority lanes right the way across the board. And it wasn't long at all before we were on that tram and heading up to the airline lounges. On that evening, I managed to get to the lounge incredibly quickly, so that gave the opportunity to give a nice little tour around. It's not particularly large, the British Airways Lounge at Dubai International Airport, but it's nicely appointed and does have a variety of seating areas, including some very comfortable seats, complete with their own footrests. There's a small self-serve food and drink selection, but most of the ordering is done nowadays at table service. We'll get into that a little bit later. There are toilet facilities within the lounge or coming with Enemis amenities. Sadly though, no showers. And finally, the food rolling out of the kitchen looked pretty good. The wine servings were very generous. Taste-wise, however, a little bit average, I have to say. Alrighty, so that's lounge done. Head into the gate, just approaching midnight here, so it'll be very nice to get on board get to sleep and have a good look around this cabin aboard the A380. Our aircraft on that particular night was British Airways' 10th A380 to be delivered, just coming up to its 9th birthday. Certainly in terms of onboard product, we'll see the Legacy Club World. Boarding was managed in a very efficient manner and it wasn't long before we were on board. We'll kick off our view of the cabin courtesy of the British Airways seat map website. With the A380, Club World is actually split over the main and upper deck. My recommendation would be to skip straight past the main deck and go for a seat on the upper deck, ideally a window seat. The best seats will always be those where you don't have to step over the legs of the person sat in the aisle seat. In that particular regard, best seats 53A and 53K just for this reason. On that particular evening, I had seat 56A, which was a little bit further back, but also had a ton of privacy. Getting settled into the seat here, you can see this yin yang style of design coming alive and you can see there I would have to step over the legs in bed mode of the person sat in the aisle seat a little bit further forward, hence why those seats just pointed out are so good. That said, I'm a huge lover of this particular seat design, particularly with British Airways when you can get on the upper deck. It used to be fantastic on the Boeing 747 and it's really good also on the A380. This is ultimately a design that does get an awful lot of hate for a variety of actually fairly good reasons. That said, when you can get it on the upper deck and you have all of those storage bins on the side, it really does help to right an awful lot of the wrongs with this particular seat design. The Club World seat is actually one of the most comfortable business class seats I've sat in, certainly in the seated position. All of the controls were in easy reach, be them for the seat or indeed for the entertainment as we saw a moment ago. From a storage point of view, this comprises of this small storage drawer down to the side. It's certainly where an awful lot of the criticism in this seat design is fairly leveled. Within it was an amenity kit, a bottle of water and the headphones for the entertainment system. On the A380, with the window seat, you do get access to two or even three of the side storage bins and that does help to make up for the very small amount of storage built into the seat design. From a charging point of view, there are a couple of chargers, one full plug socket, located in a fairly odd position, I must say. And then towards the end of the seat is the footrest that can be adjusted into a few different positions for sleeping and also seated as well. It's not for long, it's on board just here. So champagne, it's been served, so cheers. Here's to a fantastic flight. The initial service on board was incredibly efficient. They certainly made you feel welcome jumping on board. The menus were handed around. We'll jump in and have a look at those just before the meal service. There was this small light that I found just at the top of the seat. This had multi-way adjustment and could also be adjusted based on the level of brightness. We'll see that working as we push back and take off and the cabin darkens. 
As we push back, a quick mention for the channel. It recently had its first birthday. It's been the most amazing journey so far. I've loved engaging and interacting with every single one of you. If you're brand new to the channel, why not hit that subscribe button and jump on board with the rest of us. Takeoff aboard the A380 always absolutely amazes me. It's so incredibly quiet and takes so long to take to the skies, but it's always such a smooth and enjoyable experience. On that particular evening, took off with some nice views out towards the downtown. Unfortunately, as it's getting closer now to the summer in Dubai, it was very hazy by night, so not the most phenomenal view over, but certainly a nice, enjoyable ascension into the skies. With so many people in the business class starting to bed down for the night, I took this opportunity to go and explore the forward bathrooms. These were without doubt the largest size of bathroom that I've ever seen on any British Airways aircraft for sure. Not as fancy as so many other carriers in exactly the same space on the A380, but by BA standards, certainly pretty good. Heading back to the seat was a welcome cocktail aboard these nice little serving trays that BA have started to use. The pretzels were a substitute for the nuts due to a severe nut allergy on board. Can certainly see, however, how so many of you looking at that would think that that looks very cheap indeed for the business class, but a fair reason on that occasion. As for the menus on that particular evening, it was to be a very light snack to start the flight with many people, as I say, choosing to head immediately for their beds. There was a decent selection of drinks, but a real absence of the wine menu. This wasn't handed around at all. I assume they had wine on board, but it certainly wasn't offered. Beyond the light snack was then a full breakfast, which we'll catch up with in the morning, I promise as well. With the privacy divider in place, you can see how incredibly private this design of seat is. Of course, as long as you bag one of the window seats, yes, it's controversial, and yes, it is being phased out across the British Airways fleet, but there is a part of me that will certainly miss it in time. One aspect that I won't miss, however, is this incredibly flimsy table design. It's got to be the most flimsy table design across the business class world, and there's always a nervousness when I sit in the seat that one of my drinks is gonna go pinging off the side of it. Sadly, the presentation of the pretzels were a bit of a clue in terms of what was to follow. I'd opted for a cheese toasty on that evening, and a cheese toasty, sadly, it certainly wasn't. I've never once flown in a premium cabin aboard a flight and seen the staff looking genuinely guilty for what they were serving. It really was incredibly poor, particularly when compared to light snack offerings from the likes of Qatar Airways and other leading One World members. A very poor start from a catering point of view on that side. That said, the service continued to be incredibly efficient and it wasn't long before everything was cleared away and it was time to help myself into the bed. British Airways continued their fantastic collaboration with the White Company. I have to say the quality of the bedding provided on board really hits the mark. This is one of the better partnerships I believe British Airways has ever had and long may it continue. In addition to the blankets and the mattress, you also get a really nice, big, fluffy pillow. With the British Airways branding on it, it's really quite a super offering and makes for a nice, comfortable bed. I haven't noticed it in Club World on other aircraft, but on this occasion, my shoulders were right up against the armrests, so a little bit thin, but certainly an awful lot of legroom, which was great. I had a gorgeous summer sunrise to await to that day as we started our descent down over London. Before we get into the breakfast, which was certainly smelling amazing from the galley at this point, let's touch off on the entertainment on board. The British Airways entertainment system is incredibly content rich, so certainly on that front, top marks. This screen being an older style of seat, yeah, you can really see the difference. The screen looks a little bit washed out and it's certainly not the size as you've been accustomed to in some of the other recent business class flights that I've done. So a little bit mixed, but ultimately the way it swings around right in front of you was really pretty decent. As for the headphones, they were kind of okay, but nothing special. These were actually the equivalent headset as what you would get whilst traveling premium economy. So ultimately not great, but not too bad. On the Wi-Fi front, British Airways continue to score highly, and I'm sure the packages have got even cheaper in recent months. From a first class point of view, yep, that would be free. Back in the business class as elsewhere, you could browse or stream for the entire flight for just $4.99. This was the same price on the outbound as on the inbound. Really quite a strong offering on this front. Despite the descent already being underway, British Airways very kindly obliged and served me a full breakfast. I opted for the Belgian waffles and it was really quite good. There was a variety of little dishes served as part of the breakfast offering and this certainly went an awfully long way to making up for some of the downfalls the night before. 
On the amenity kit side, this is again part of the collaboration with the White Company. British Airways have been opting for this approach for many years just now. The amenity kit is nicely done. I particularly like the pouch and it certainly has the relevant potions and lotions that you'd expect. I have to say the eye mask in particular is one of my favorite eye masks from any amenity kit around the world. It really is very comfortable and nicely padded as well. London remains one of the most interesting cities to fly into. So often as part of the final descent stages, you're treated to some absolutely amazing views back over the city. On that particular morning, we have the traditional summer based approach with the final approach over Windsor. As we now start to overpass Windsor, it was a good time for me to reflect on what had been a fairly mixed flight with the airline. In terms of where British Airways stand in 2023 in the world of business class, it's a bit of a mixed bag. Across the fleet, they are in a transitionary phase, going between the older legacy club world, as we swore in this review, transitioning through to the new club suites product. Undeniably, the new seat is better, certainly when it comes to direct aisle access and privacy for every single passenger. It certainly still feels as though the service is fairly rushed. I think that's driven by the fact that they're not flying with quite as many crew as they could be and that certainly reflects in the service but as I say on this particular flight it was certainly very efficient and pleasant enough. Undeniably the catering offered was by far and above the biggest issue but overall it was nice to be back on the A380. If you'd like to check out British Airways with their brand new business class club suite, you can do so by clicking the video in the bottom left just now.